This is Mr. Martin. This is the second video uh, for Math Analysis Precalculus Honors for Section 4.7. We're talking about inverse trig functions. Uh, in the first video, we talked about uh, inverses in general, how you may have learned them in algebra, and then we went on to talk about the inverses for uh, sine x, where we restricted the domain uh, to negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2 and um, the inverse for cosine where we restricted the domain to 0 to pi so that when we reflect over the y equals uh, x line y equals x we still have a function so now we need to talk about uh, tangents so here's my y equals tan x and we've got our asymptotes in here and somehow we need to figure out how to restrict this graph so that we have a function. So basically for this one, if we just take one of these periods, since the period is pi over b, each one of these repeating patterns, um, if we take them individually and we reflect them, we would have a function. So I'm going to take this piece here right in the middle, and that's what I'm going to use to reflect over the line y equals x. So in this case, we're going to be reflecting the asymptotes as well. Before we reflect that, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the uh, key points that we have here. I've got this asymptote on the left is pi over 2, and this asymptote on the right is positive pi over 2. We're going through the origin at 0, 0. And then I'm just going to pick two other spots here. Uh, we're going to take this spot here, so the tangent is negative 1, and we know the tangent is going to be negative 1 at negative pi over 4. So this point here is going to be negative pi over 4, negative 1. And then I'm going to take this same spot here. I've got a y value of 1. And I know the tangent at pi over 4, pi over 4, is 1. So we're going to use these three points to help us do the reflection before we do that, let's take a look at what this corresponds to on our unit circle, like we did with the other graphs. We'll try to here. Let's slide this up a bit. Okay, so here's my unit circle. And I can see that I'm going to the left, and I'm going to approach negative pi over 2, but I'm not going to get there. Okay, so here's my negative pi over 2 where as with sine inverse I could use this point down here with tan inverse I'm not going to because there's a asymptote there and when I write my domain in range you'll see I'll use a little different notation to indicate that and then I'm gonna go to the right and approach pi over 2 but not get to there either so there's pi over 2 so we can see we're kind of using the right half similar to sine except we're not using pi over 2 at the top of the circle and negative pi over 2 at the bottom of the circle. So let's go ahead and graph uh, the these three points on our inverse graph. So this is going to be y equals tan inverse of x. So I had negative uh, pi over 4, negative 1. So I'm going to flip that to do negative 1, negative pi over 4, which is going to be right in the middle here. So there's this point here and then I've got 0, 0 and then I've got pi over 4, 1 so that's going to be 1 and pi over 4 so that's going to be right there and then again if I flip that it's going to end up looking something like this and I'm also going to flip my asymptotes so now my asymptotes are going to go horizontally instead of vertically so here's my asymptotes here at uh, negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. So if I look at my domain, I can see that the graph is going to the right forever and it's going to go to the right or to the left forever approaching my asymptotes. So we're going from negative infinity to positive infinity. And notice the use of parentheses here instead of uh, the other brackets that I used uh, for the other functions because it can never approach those and then my range I can see again I'm going to use parentheses here to indicate that it cannot get to that spot 
is going to be negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2. All right, so it's going to approach those values, but it'll never get there. So if we take a look at a, a quick example here, let's say I have tan inverse of root 3 over 3. Again, I want to try and figure out what angle goes with this. So I want to figure out what angle has a tangent of root 3 over 3. And again, it has to be somewhere between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. And that would be pi over 6. Or again, different notation means the same thing. Arctan negative 1. So what angle has a tangent of negative 1? Again, it has to be on this right half of the circle, and that would be negative pi over 4. So as always, write down your questions. Pause the video, write down your questions, and ask them when you see me. So here's a little summary of our uh, inverse trig functions, domain and ranges. Um, you know, these are the same things that we have next to the inverse graphs up above. That's a little summary. And then here's a, a chart. And if you notice, there's nothing in the third quadrant because all of our restricted domains are either the top half of the circle from 0 to pi or the right half of the unit circle, which is negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2. So let's take a look at the values that we don't need to use first. For inverse cosine, I just use the top half of the circle. So I'm not going to have any, I don't need any of the y coordinates in this second quadrant because I will never have an inverse sine in the second quadrant. And then down here in the fourth quadrant, I'm never going to have any inverse cosine because inverse cosine is restricted from 0 to pi. So I don't need any of these. Don't need that. Notice there's no tangent down here because tangent's undefined down there. And there's no tangent up here because tangent is undefined up there. So I'm going to pause the video right now and I'm going to fill all this out. So this would be a good time for you uh, to see how you're doing on your unit circle and if you need some review. So when you restart the video, this table will be populated. And if you need to pause the video again, and f change some things to make sure that yours is correct, go ahead and do that. Uh, but uh, go ahead and pause the video now. All right, so here is the uh, populated uh, unit circle. And again, we've X'd out some of these boxes because our inverse trig functions for those values uh, don't apply. Uh, and we can see that what we're going to do is we're looking for these coordinates and then we want to see what angle goes with them. So for our inverse, inverse cosine problems, take a look at what's going on here. I'm looking for angles that have these different cosine values. And what do you notice about all the angles on the top half of the circle? Well, they're all positive. So when you're doing inverse cosine problems, your answer will always be positive. Right? That's really important to keep in mind. And then when we're doing inverse sine or inverse tangent, we're using the first quadrant and the fourth quadrant here, again going counterclockwise up to pi over 2 and counterclockwise, or uh, counterclockwise up to pi over 2 and clockwise down to negative pi over 2. And here we can have some negative angles. So uh, if you need to, go ahead again and pause the video and um, check your values for your table to make sure everything's filled out correctly. Uh, Make sure you are careful when you check this because you don't want to be working off a table that's got some bad values in it. So um, again, pause if you need to. If you don't, let's move on to these examples. So we've got six examples here. And uh, again, if you want to pause the video and try these on your own, feel free. Otherwise, I'm going to go through these. Uh, fairly quickly. Again, uh, if you have any questions, uh, you should have plenty of room on the page to uh, write down your questions and ask me when you see me. So for number one, we're looking for the arc sine of one half. So I want to find an angle on the right half of the unit circle that has a y coordinate of one half. And this is going to be 
our pi over 6. Okay, so if we scroll back up here, I'm looking for a y coordinate. Here's my y coordinate of a half, and it goes with an angle of pi over 6. So we're kind of using the chart backwards. Number two, I've got tan inverse of root 3 over 3, so I want to find an angle on the right half of the circle that has a tangent of root 3 over 3. This is also pi over 6. Cosine inverse root 3 over 2, so I'm looking for an x coordinate on the top half of the circle that has an x coordinate of root 3 over 2. This is also pi over 6. Number four, I'm looking for an angle that has an x coordinate of a half, again on the top half of the circle, so this is going to be pi over three. Number five, I'm looking for a tangent somewhere on the right half of the unit circle, um, an angle that has a tangent of negative one, so that angle would be negative pi over four. And number six, I'm looking for an angle that has a y coordinate of negative root 2 over 2. It has to be on the right half of the circle, so I'm going up to pi over 2 to find it, or down to negative pi over 2 to find that angle. And this one turns out to be negative pi over 4 as well. So again, if you have any questions, uh, make sure that you ask. Make sure you're doing the practice problems in the section and uh, getting help in class when you get stuck. And uh, we will see you next time.